What's up everyone, I'm Callum Montos, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some insane battles in the Open Great League featuring a triple buffed mushroom theme team with Braylon running Force Palm in the lead and Amoongus and Shinotic in the back running Astonish. Now this might not seem like a very good team to run with Clodza being on basically every single team, but if you compare the meta to previous seasons, all the wing attack users are gone, fire is also a lot less common, and whilst Hostiles Henry did just make a video on the first legend using Talonflame as a very effective closer, luckily for me he did also tell people not not to use Talonflame due to the very annoying fast move animation bug that makes everything look like it's throwing incinerates at rapid speeds. Overall I had a pretty successful time running this team going 14 and 6 in my first 4 sets. I did think about calling it there and banking a set for my next video which is going to be a team that is pretty hard to use but in the end I decided to play my final set and unfortunately I went 0 and 5 so definitely should have just stopped whilst I was on a high but oh well I still went positive on the day so with that being said let's just get into the question of the day. Do you think Clonsar is too strong after the the changes this season or do you think its usage will die down eventually as people adapt to the new meta and bring stronger counters? Let me know in the comment section down below but with that being said let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle and talk of the devil, there it is, Clodzar in the lead. Now, currently, Clodzar is ranked 1 and 2 on PV Poke, depending on whether it's running Sludge Bomb or Stone Edge as the coverage. I'm going to no shield this, and it is the Stone Edge, which is resisted by the fighting typing. I can now fire off a Seed Bomb, and then I will swap straight away into my Amoongus, and the opponent swaps at the same time, and they come in with a Shadow Machoke, so they might be running the most basic boring pick in the lead, but this is a very spicy, very fun pick. Unfortunately, though, for them, I know that it only has fighting type charge moves, so get a no shield, fire off the grass knot, get the KO up against the Machoke, they come back in with the Clod Sire and I'm definitely going to shield at this point because Shinotic will not appreciate the double super effective poison stings from this Clod Sire, so I'm now going to over farm, go for three Astonishes, fire off the charge move, going for that grass knot, grass knot gets the KO and they've got a Shadow Machamp in the back, so running ABB, Machamp and Machoke which is cool to see, I'm just going to no shield, Cross Shot actually takes us out there despite being resisted, we're now going to come in with the Shinotic and this is where the buffed Astonish damage is very helpful for us. I'm going to shield this. The opponent goes for a rock side. I now know that I can live a rock side from the Shadow Machamp, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. Of course, I've got no shields remaining. Rock side doesn't get the KO, so I can go for the Astonish farm down, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to up over there into next battle, Braylon into Clodzire once again, so gonna play this out exactly the same here, of course, if they are running Sludge Bomb then I'm just unfortunately going to lose very hard in this lead matchup, but gonna no shield once again, and it is the Sludge Bomb, so it takes out the Breloom, and suddenly this is a lot worse than the previous game, as we now come in with the Amoongus, I'm gonna shield this up here because they're less likely to bait up against Amoongus, so I shield up the Earthquake, we're gonna have far off a Grass Knot here, Grass Knot gonna do some decent damage in this matchup, Grass Knot is no shielded, I'm now gonna swap and hopefully I've caught an Earthquake on my Shinotic here. And it is the Earthquake, which is great as that's resisted. They then come in with a Shadow Machamp, so maybe it's the same team as the last opponent, although I feel like it'd be very odd to see back-to-back -back Shadow uh, Machokes in the GBL, but either way, we're going to no shield as the opponent goes for a rock side. Rock side doesn't KO, but that actually allows him to get a huge karate chop farm down, which is certainly not ideal. But I'm gonna no shield this as the opponent fires off another rock side. They will make it to another move, and I know this is now just a cross chop, but I am very low, so I'm actually going to shield up the cross chop. The opponent is going to swap back into Clodza, big mistake as they just give me more farm, and they've got Shadow for Alligator in the back, so things are now looking great. We've got back-to-back -back Grass Knots already loaded. Gonna go for one extra Astonish first, just because this is good charge move timing. We're now gonna go for the Grass Knot, getting the KO up against for Alligator, getting the Astonish farm down up against the Machamp, and I'm able to take that game. So GG to up over there into next battle, you can see Vesperquint in the lead, so not Clod's eye, but another very annoying, very bulky Poison Sting user. At least Poison Sting is going to be non-stab this time around they fire off the exeter and then they come in with a dunspar so not ideal for us as of course they are going to be double resisting the astonished damage but Braum has a very good matchup up against the dunspar so it's not the end of the world of course I'm gonna no shield this as they go for the draw run i should be able to make it to a grass knot here and this will put them into farm down range hopefully i can just snipe with my Breloom. so i'm going for the snipe and we do get that snipe there they're going to come back in with the Vesper Quinn, and I'm just going to no shield this. I should be able to live an Exorcist. Exorcist does do a lot of damage though, but I'm going to make it to a Dynamic Punch. And honestly, I need this to land here. Dynamic Punch, double resisted, but it does do some decent damage there. And it will hopefully put them into Astonish farm down range for my Shinotic in the back. So we're going to wait out the switch got come in with the Shinotic, and they should be able to make it to back to back charges. I believe they are one away from back to back Exorcist. So I shield the first one, and then actually stopped attacking there because I was going to try and make a catch, but the opponent 
that actually swaps out there, banking the energy and swapping into a Kanto Marowak. Now, honestly, this is a pretty good matchup for us. We are down a shield, but we did have a slight energy advantage. So we're going to fire off back-to-back -back Seed Bombs here. I believe they are back. They are one away from the back-to-back -back Rock side. So going to shoot up the Rock side, go for one more Astonish, then make the catch onto my Amoongus, able to catch a Rock side. Rock side is going to take out the Amoongus there. They come back in with the Vesper Quinn. Can we live an X Scissor from this range? X Scissor doesn't get the KO. Astonish takes them out there, and we are just barely able to live the Mud damage, making it to a Seed Bomb. Seed Bomb gets the KO up against the Marowak, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's top in there into next battle, going to see a Shadow Pidgeot in the lead, and wow, <laughs> look at the gust damage there. We've got them like very close to the yellow HP already, but we've only got Astonish users in the back that are also grass types. Going to take massive super effective damage from these gusts. This game is already over, especially if they end up shielding this charge move. We're going for the foul play. Foul play is unfortunately shielded. At this point, the opponent probably has clocked onto the fact they were running a triple mushroom theme team, so they're just going to double shield their Pidgeot, and they will be able to fully sweep my entire team with just a single Pokemon, which is Honestly, I'm not even disappointing. It's just funny to see. But yeah, GG's to this opponent there. They're going to fire off the charge move. I'm not going to bother shielding at this point. Feather Dance gets the KO. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's to that opponent there. Into next battle, going to see a Shadow Galarian wheezing in the lead. So I'm going to say swap into my Amoongus. And the opponent is choosing to stay in. And by the way, I did this battle whilst I was watching the new Yonkers video featuring this Pokemon. They full send the overheat there. Then We then lag a lot. And I'm not really sure... What happened there? But either way, gonna fire off the Grass Knot. Grass Knot is going to be shielded by the opponent. And at this point, because of the lag, I actually don't know how much energy they've got. They go for another overheat there, but then they swap into Fire Alligator. And by the way, the Yonkers team was Galarian Weezing for Alligator, and I believe it was Chestnut in the back, so this might actually be the exact same team whilst I was watching that video, so it was fresh in my mind. I'm going to shoot out the Ice Beam, hoping to go for a full Force Palm farm down, but we don't quite get there in time, so I'm going to have to fire off a Steve Bomb here, otherwise they would make it to a Hydro Cannon, and so we get the KO there, they come in with the Chestnut, and we're going straight for Dynamic Punch, Dynamic Punch, neutral damage here, but it's going to do huge damage in this matchup, but they get this night with the Galarian Weezing. Now, I believe they are four away from the next Overheat here, so I'm going to come in with my Shinotic, go for two Astonishes, go and wait for two turns, make the swap, make the catch into my Amoongus, they full send the overheat, and now I will just be able to go for a full Astonish farm down, so the opponent just concedes the match there. So GG set up over there, into next battle, another Clodsire in the lead, so after the last one, honestly, I think I might just end up shielding the first charge. No, nope, never mind. I'm actually going to swap into my Amoongus instead. A little bit risky just because this will allow the opponent, if they want to, to swap out of this matchup and potentially align their Clodsire up against my Shinotic, which is definitely not a good matchup. But either way, I'm going to go for the Grass Knot up against the Dance Fast, and we should be able to live this, although I'm not certain if I will make it to another charge. Route. So they go for the Rock Side. Actually, looks like we will get there in time, so that's great. Grass Knot will get the Dance Fast fairly low, and then I can try and snipe with the Braylon once again, but this time unfortunately they do live with one or two hp a bit annoying but i can live the drill on there so gonna no shield to come back in with the clod sire honestly i do prefer if they just no shield this but they're going to shield which is definitely not ideal at this point i kind of have to shield as well because i need some damage on this clod sire remember we've got shinotic in the back and those poison stings are going to shred through us so i go for the seed bomb there it does connect this time around they can fully farm us down so that's not ideal we're going to come in with the shinotic i'm definitely just going to Actually, never mind. I was going to say I'm going to shield, but nope, I know shield that. I'm going to go for the full Astonish farm down. They're actually not going to make it to a charge move, so they swap into their own grass and fairy type Pokemon. We go for the Moon Blast, grabbing a shield from the opponent there, and I should, well, it depends what charge move they've got here. If they're running Seed Bomb, then I think they might outpace me, but they're running Grass Knot, which means I will make it to another Moon Blast just before they make it to the next move. Moon Blast gets the KO. I'm able to Astonish, farm down the Clodsire, and I'm able to take that game. So GG to up over there into next battle. You see a Breloom into Greninja. So a great lead matchup for me. They're going to say swap into Cresselia. So we respond with our Shinotic. Now this is actually a pretty good matchup for us since we are running Astonish and Astonish is dealing so much damage. But unfortunately they do debuff my attack with the Moonblast, which is definitely not ideal because now this Moonblast will not get the KO. But we also debuff their attack. So at this point I'm thinking... 
Hmm, should I be shielding this? I'm gonna no shield. Moonblast gets us very low and actually they're able to farm me down. That is painful. If they didn't get the Moonblast debuff, the uh, Moonblast debuff there, I could have very easily won the zero shield scenario. Come out with a decent amount of energy as well, but unfortunately it backfires there. I thought, you know what, we've still got two grass types. I don't really need switch advantage up against a Greninja. I'm gonna swap into my Brelu and Yes, we absolutely did need switch advantage because they've got Ariados in the back. And unfortunately, there's just nothing we can do here. They're actually going to shield the first move, which doesn't really help me because now they can massively over farm here. Fire off a charge move. Personally, I would have gone for Trailblaze there just because you're guaranteed to KO anyways. I'm not going to shield, so you might as well boost your attack. But either way, it doesn't really matter. This game is now over. I'm going to no shield just because there's no point here. But unless the opponent does swap back into the Greninja, which they do then maybe we've got a slither of hope here. But I'm going to shield this up. They go for the Night Sash. We're going to over farm now. Fire off two Astonishes. Then fire off the Grass Knot here. Grass Knot gets the KO, but they're already at another Charge Reef. And at this point, this is game over. So going to no shield. The opponent actually goes for the Trailblaze this time around. Doesn't really matter. It, it takes us out there, despite being double resisted. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG stuff out there, internet's battle because he's superior in the lead and we swap, catching the charge route. Unfortunately, we don't get the astonished through, which we should have done, but you can see we did start with weak connection, which definitely is not ideal. They're gonna come in with Bastion, which I haven't really seen much of this season, which is very nice. And when I have seen it, it's honestly been pretty easy to deal with because SmackDowns just don't do that much damage this season. So they're actually not gonna be able to go for a full farm down here, which is very convenient for me because the longer this opponent stays in this matchup here, the better it is because now they can't bank back to back charge moves. So they go for the Stone Edge there. We're actually going to snipe with the Breloom. We get that snipe this time around, which is very nice. They come back in with the Superior. And depending on whether they shield, I might double shield my Breloom here. So going to shield up the first Airy Lace. And we're going to go for one Force Palm. Go for the Sea Bomb here. If they shield this, I'm definitely just going to commit both my shields. And they do shield. So now I'm going to fire off another Sea Bomb here. Looking to grab both shields from the opponent first. And we do grab both shields. So clearly, whatever's in the back is very weak to the Breloom. So I'm definitely going to use my final shield. They go for Aerial Ace. And they're running a Licky Licky in the back. And we're able to make it to the Dynamic Punch. And Dynamic Punch going to hit for super effective damage. It easily one-shots the Licky Licky. I can now Force Palm farm down the Superior. So the opponent just concedes the match. So GG to up over there into next battle. We're going to see a Shadow of Bomber Snow in the lead. So obviously not great for Grass types, but we are running Force Palm. And these Force Palms are absolutely shredding through a Bomber Snow. They will make it to an Icy Wind, which is not ideal because that debuffs my attack. And they're now going to come in with a Clodsire, which again, not very ideal for me. But we're going to come in with the Amoongus. I'm going to no shield the first move. The opponent does full send the Earthquake, dealing about half our health there. We're now going to fire off a Grass Knot. Grass Knot is going to do some decent damage in this matchup. They do no shield that, and they will out pace me to the next charge move and this one I'm thinking is probably for alligator in the back so i'm gonna shield this but honestly i should over farm way more than i do here so this is a big mistake because if they don't want to now they can just no shield that and they will be able to outpace me with their for alligator so i think what i should have done there is actually go for one extra astonish then swap try and get a crp tie sack swap and that was basically my only win condition because unfortunately now shadow for alligator is absolutely loaded and if they're running ice beam this is game over if they're running crunch then actually shinotic will resist all of the moves that they can throw so it kind of just depends what moveset they're on we're about to find out is it ice beam is it crunch it is unfortunately ice beam that nearly one shots us shadow core gets the farm down and unfortunately we do lose that game but GG's to up over there. We did have multiple attempts to potentially win that game, or at least make it a lot closer, but we didn't play very well there. Anyways, into the next battle, we're going to see a jump off save swap there. So, going to come in with the Amoongus. They did overfund quite a lot, so I'm going to shield respecting the damage from an Acrobatics. It is just an Aerial Ace, so actually we can live this pretty comfortably, and I should actually live two Aerial Aces pretty comfortably. And because they're running Fairy Wind, we are resisting that, so they're not going to be able to fast move farm me down. We go with the Foul Play, grabbing a shield there. Amoongus could also learn Sludge Bomb, by the way, so I do think that is a good shield usage on the opponent's end. We're going to let the next Aerial Ace go through, fire off the Foul Play. And Foul Play is going to be coming through here. Foul Play is going to be no shielded by the opponent. It really doesn't do that much damage. Jump Luff is very bulky, but I do make it to another Foul Play. So Foul Play is going to grab the final shield from the opponent. It's a battle of the fast move beat down. And unfortunately, Fairy Wind does actually farm us down. But we can come in with Shinotic. They're only going to get off one charge move. I was pretty confident they're not running Acrobatics and Aerial Ace, so I know shield. We then snipe with the Breloom, Seed Bomb gets the KO, and they come in with 
big surprise, a Clodsire in the back. So, going to fire off the Seed Bomb here. Seed Bomb is going to be no shield, of course. All shields are down on the opponent's end. I need them to throw a charge move. And luckily for me, they do. I don't think I was going to make it to another Seed Bomb there. But they actually undercharged that, which is a smart play. We can now come in with the Shinotic here. I'm going to go straight for the Seed Bomb, throwing off the three Astonishes. Seed Bomb is going to do some decent damage here. Can we get the Astonish farm down? It's going to be close. But they can't throw back-to-back -back charge moves if they're on Stone Edge. So Astonish gets the farm down up against the Clodsire and I'm able to take that game. So GG set up over there. Internet's battle. You can see Breloom into Clodsire yet again. Wow, big surprise there. And yeah, unfortunately we are like... Uh I think the honeymoon phase of this new season has probably worn off. We are in a stage where it's getting pretty boring facing the same Pokemon all the time. And honestly, I think someone commented this the other day when I asked about it. Like, the meta is always going to become stale. And actually, I don't think that's on Niantic. I think that's on the player base for just being so like unoriginal like just not being able to create their own teams they have to just use whatever's top ranked on pv poke or whatever youtubers are telling them to use and it is pretty sad to see because unfortunately it doesn't matter how spicy i go if i'm just facing clods out every single battle it does get boring so please guys <laughs> use more variety in your battles just make make gbl fun anyways we're gonna swap here catch the charge move but unfortunately the damage is already done that mana buzz being aligned to my amoongus was just very, very bad here. And whilst, yes, we've still got two shields, this Clodsire does have quite a lot of energy. So they fire off the Stone Edge. They should be making it to another charge move. So I'm going to fire off the Seed Bomb here. Seed Bomb is going to grab the shield. And that was somehow a CMP tie, which doesn't really make sense. Either way, I'm going to no shield. They go for the Stone Edge there. We can go for the Astonish Farm down, but we're just way too low here. They actually come in with Greninja. So this would have been a good matchup for us. But unfortunately, that Mana Buzz just absolutely destroying our Amoongus, completely walling it, meant that there was just no way back for for me so unfortunately they do snarl far me down and we do end up losing that game but GG's to opponent there into next battle we can see a shadow alolan sand slash in the lead and this is amazing for me because first of all they're not swapping out so probably very weak to brain in the back and secondly they weren't even running powder snow so we don't take that much fast move damage either they then come in with azumarill so i'm gonna fire off the seed bomb and then i will be swapping into my amoongus because amoongus and shinotic can live an ice beam reasonably, reasonably comfortably whereas breloom definitely from that range will not live an ice beam so ice beam comes through does just over half of our health but that's okay we're now gonna over farm throwing just before they make it to the next ice beam grass knot is gonna be no shielded by the opponent and they come in with a greninja so this game should be over unless the opponent like double boost or something. So we go for the grass knot and actually the opponent can over farm quite significantly in this matchup. And that's pretty smart from the opponent realizing they're taking resisted astonished damage and they do get the boost. So even though we are going to resist everything they can throw here, assuming they're not running aerial ace, we're still not in the best position. They bait once again there, maybe looking for another boost, which definitely is the right play from their end. They go for a hydro cannon, but this time we're gonna, now going to swap into Breloom. They shouldn't be at back to back charge moves, or at least I hope not. So so get a shield, they go for the Night Sash, no boost this time around, we can force bomb, farm them down, and we're able to take that game. But GG set up over there, they did actually make that very close considering they had a Greninja up against my three grass types. But anyways, into next battle, we can see a Shadow Drift Bloom in the lead, and they swap into Feranicator. This is a very, very odd choice here. We're going to go and fire off the Grass Knot, and if they're coming in with Feranicator, then maybe they're running double... Um, double water in the back, maybe something like a Gastrodon in the back. I don't know, but either way, I can actually make it to another charge move. This point is not running Ice Beam, they're running Crunch, so they're going to shield that. They might actually be able to go for a full farm down, but they do end up throwing their energy, which is pretty nice for me because whilst the energy is going to be walled by Breloom since they're not running Ice Beam. We're still going to take a lot of damage from a Hydro Cannon anyways. But the opponent goes for a Crunch there, which is definitely not the right play. We can get the Force Palm farm down. Not really ideal for me because I don't have anything to throw into the Drift Limb. And now they will be able to debuff me, assuming they go for an Icy Wind, which they do. And they've actually got Galarian Weezing in the back. So definitely misread this team. Not really sure why they didn't come in with this up against my Amoongus. But either way, get an O-Shield. I figured they're not going to full send an Overheat there and debuff their attack. But they're actually probably not even running Overheat. They go for play rough they get the ko and unfortunately this is game over sea bomb doesn't do enough damage there they can just fairy wind farm me down and unfortunately we do lose that game 
but GG still up there, and the fact that they're not running overheat is probably why they didn't swap into it against my Amoongus. But anyways, into next battle, we can see Skarmory. Now, I stayed in initially thinking, all right, if they're running Air Slash, I will swap out, and then I just swapped out anyways, which was definitely not the right play here, because actually, I think Breloom, since it does take quite a while to get to a Sky Attack now this season, probably could win the matchup up against Skarmory in the lead. But either way, we do swap out, we go into Amoongus, we're going to go for back-to-back -back foul plays, and we do get them fairly low, but unfortunately, they do still make it to a second Sky Attack. So, gonna no shield this. They go for the sky attack, get in the KO, but we put them into range where a single force palm will get the KO. They actually come in with a whisk cash, which is very strange. Another Pokemon that was nerfed this season, so. Not really sure what's going on here, but either way, we fire off the Seed Bomb. I'm just going to no-shield this. They didn't farm up to a potential Blizzard. Mud Bomb doesn't really do that much damage, and the fact that they're going for Mud Bomb instead of Scald makes me think that maybe they are running Blizzard. So I'm actually going to shield this, respect the damage, and it is a Blizzard. That would have one-shot us there. But since we shield it, the opponent does just concede the match. Probably running like double Mud Boys in the back, not really sure. But either way, GG's to the opponent there. Into next battle, the opponent's going to say swap into a Shadow Ferrothorn. So at this point, you might think, well, we can live a power whip there. I'm actually going to shield this because I've got such a good matchup here. Might as well keep my brain alive. They've clearly got a good response in the back. They just couldn't swap into it. And we are about to see that they do have a very, very strong response to fire, uh, sorry, Grass-type Pokemon in the form of the Talonflame. So we go for the Dynamic Punch there. Going to swap into the Amoongus. And you can see... As well as, like, for the Incinerate users, everything is going to be throwing Incinerate towards them. They also look like they're throwing the Fire Spin, which is kind of interesting. That I've only just realized that, for some reason, Talonflame does have two different fast move animations for when it's throwing fast moves, whilst most Pokemon only have the single one, and it's just, like, the actual, like, effects of that fast move. But either way, we're going to get the Astonish Farm down. They've got Greninja here, so this should be game over. But we're going to, of course... Let the opponent throw a charge move. They go for Night Sash, and they... I think they might have boosted there, but uh, you obviously can't see that. We go for the Seed Bomb. We are just going to wait for the opponent to throw a charge move here, and eventually we will then swap into our Breloom. The opponent goes for the Hydro Cannon. That actually doesn't quite take us out there, so we can just fire up another Seed Bomb, and Seed Bomb from this range will get the KO up against Greninja, and I'm able to take that game. So GG sort of over there into the next battle, we can see a Malamar in the lead, so definitely not ideal for me, gonna say swap into my Amoongus, also taking super effective damage from the Psychic Typing, and unfortunately they do just barely outpace me to a foul play, or at least, well, not barely outpacing me there, but they are able to throw at perfect timing there, just as the Astonish is coming through, so we're now gonna fire off a Grass Knot, Grass Knot does connect, it does big damage, but the foul play puts us into Ice Shard farm down range, but that's okay because I can now come in with my Breloom and go for a Force Palm farm down. And if they debuff me here, actually, I will get one extra fast move in, which is quite nice for me because uh, we're going to be closer to our next charge move. But they come back in with the Malamar and the opponent's going to bank a ton of energy. And this is a huge mistake here. I should have thrown straight away. Instead, I let the opponent make it to a Hydro Cannon. And that's just a huge mistake because now the opponent can just safely no shield this. They don't need to preserve the health on the Feraligator. Instead, just save both their shields for the Malamar. And there's not a lot we can do here. So I can fire off a charge move. Hydro Cannon put me into range where they can just go for a full sideway farm down. And at this point, I have to just no shield. The opponent will go for foul play. That's resisted damage. But it still puts me into farm down range. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG set up over there, internet's back to get see Shadow Machamp in the lead. So I'm actually going to swap straight away, well not straight away, after two fast moves, hoping the opponent would just throw their cross shot straight away, and they do exactly that. So that's great for me, able to catch it resisted on my Amoongus, then going to fire off a Grass Knot into the Dunsparce coming in, and the opponent is going to throw immediately. So at this point, going to no shield the first move, and if the opponent does throw straight away, then it's probably preferred for me, and the opponent is going to throw immediately as well once again. So at this point, going to no shield my Amoongus, draw run, gets the KO there, but that's absolutely okay we can come in with the breloom and we are just barely not able to commit to a full force bomb farm down i could have tanked a resisted charge reef here and then just farm them down but instead i throw the charge reef there because my champ also doesn't have that much fast move pressure against me but a drift blim definitely does so we're going to come in with the shinotic also hitting for super effective damage with astonish myself they're going to go for the icy wind debuff my attack which is definitely not ideal they're going to make it to another cross shot but i can just let this go through as cross shop is resisted damage it doesn't do that much damage up against us 
We can now fire off a Seed Bomb and Seed Bomb. I'm hoping they do just no shield. They do actually shield that, which is not really ideal for me. But we can fire off another Seed Bomb. Seed Bomb is going to get the KO. We're now going to swap into our Breloom and we're just going to fire off a Seed Bomb here. Now, unfortunately, this is not looking too good for us if the opponent shields, but they let that go through. And that is a huge mistake because now we can just commit to a full Astonish farm down. We're able to take out the Drift Blend there and I'm able to take that game. So GG's, GG's to the opponent there, if they just shielded that up, I wouldn't have made it to a seed bolt on my Shinotic. So in today's battle, we are unfortunately going to be met with a Talon Flame, which is definitely not ideal for us. We're going to fire off the Foul Play. Foul Play is going to be shielded by the opponent. They're going to commit to a full farm down here, and we're able to make it to another Foul Play. Please just let this go through. No, the opponent does shield that up there. Definitely not ideal for us. At this point, I'm just going to fully sacrifice the Breloom. Honestly, hoping that they're running Fly and Brave Bird and not Flame Charge here. The opponent goes for the Fly, which is fine. Takes us out there in the one shot. But we can come in with the Shinotic. And they've just farmed up two back-to-back -back Flies once again. But that's okay. We still got both our shields. So definitely just going to shield both. And hoping Astonish will get the KO here. So they go for Fly number two. But they've got Ferrothorn in the back. And unfortunately, there's just nothing we can do here. So I just concede the match. But GG Turpo in their internet battle, Ariados in the lead, so once again, not a very good lead matchup for us. Gonna say swap into my Amoongus, and the opponent's gonna fire off what's most likely gonna be a lunge, yep, lunge, then swapping into Dugong, and that just makes this matchup more comfortable for them, as they can tank a Grass Knot pretty comfortably here. We're not gonna fire off the Grass Knot, throwing on CMP, and that's actually perfect for me, because this puts them, hopefully, into perfect Force Palm farm down range. They don't undercharge the Icy Wind or anything like that, and they couldn't really afford to, because I was just one Astonish away from the next charge move, but either way, we get the perfect farm down there farming them down just as they're reaching the next charge move we're now going to fire off a dynamic punch this is double resisted so is seed bomb but dynamic punch obviously going to do more damage in this matchup but they actually shield there so maybe i could have baited but either way they're going to fire off a lunge they're now going to come in with greninja and we can actually very comfortably win this matchup although of course astonish being resisted it will be a charge move that i need to land in this matchup and since we're debuffed i'm not certain if a seed bomb will get the ko so instead firing off the moon blast getting the ko up against greninja they come back in with the Ariados, and unfortunately, I don't think I'm making it to another Moonblast. So I settle for the Seed Bomb, gonna swap into my Breloom, but unfortunately, they can just debuff me straight away. And honestly, I'm not even certain if I will make it to a Seed Bomb here before they fully farm me down, and no, we're not able to do so. I think if I'd have gone for Seed Bomb initially up against the Ariados, maybe I could have made it to a second one, but we were debuffed, so even then, we wouldn't have got the KO there. So GG's to the opponent there. Pretty unfortunate team comp for me. But into the next battle, gonna see a much better lead for the Dunspot, oh, sorry, for the Breloom, leading into Dunsparce, but we're met with a Clodsire, so it's actually been a few battles since we've seen Clodsire, which is very nice. Unfortunately for me though, all of those battles were not great because we saw like either Ariados or Talonflame, but either way, gonna swap into a Moongus. I'm actually gonna shield and they go for the Sludge Bomb bait, which is unfortunate. I figured they're probably not gonna bait there, but actually I think they might have just, or I might have just accidentally caught a Sludge Bomb there rather than them purposely throwing a Sludge Bomb into my Amoongus. But either way, we're going to fire off the Grass Knot. I'm not certain if Foul Play would get the KO, so I play it safe. Grass Knot does get the KO there. They're going to come back in with the Dunsparce. I'm going to throw on the potential CMP title, though the opponent does actually overfarm here. We go for the Grass Knot, and they are going to continue to overfarm, throwing just before they make it to back-to-back -back charge. We use Drill Run, gets the KO. We come in with the Breloom. Definitely not going to shield this as it is resisted. As they go for the draw on there, and then they come in with a zoom reel. So we're swapping straight away into our Shinotic. Unfortunately, they will outpace me to the first charge move, but I can live an ice beam from full health. So gonna no shield the first one. And now I'm gonna overfarm in this matchup, throwing a seed bomb just before they make it to ice beam number two. Seed bomb is gonna be shielded by the opponent, and we make it to another seed bomb, throwing on the CMP tire, looks like. So seed bomb number two is gonna be no shielded this time around. And honestly, I need the astonished damage at this point. So I'm gonna shield this. I'm also hoping the opponent will try and make a catch onto Dunsparce and they do because we actually weren't even at the energy to throw a seed bomb but now we're going to come out with back-to-back -back seed bombs or at least a seed bomb on my Breloom and one on my Shinotic. The opponent recognizes they've made a mistake so they just let the move go through there. So GG's to the opponent there into the final battle of this video, leading into a Gastrodon. So an amazing lead matchup for me, although the opponent's going to say swap into a Shadow Drapion. And honestly, Shadow Drapion, very tricky say swap here, just because, of course, I'm going to resist the typical Aquatil Crunch moveset 
in the charge moves, but the poison stings, because they are dealing more damage this season, are just chunking up against my Breloom. At this point, gonna have to no shield this, can't afford to double shield my Breloom. Remember, we do have two grass types though for the Gastrodon, so it's not the end of the world, but we're gonna come in with the Amoongus, basically tank the poison stings whilst they're neutral, then swap into Shinotic and catch a potential crunch, and we're able to catch that crunch, which is very nice, but they come in with a Galarian Weezing, so not ideal for me, and they will just barely outpace me. I've got a tough call to make here. I'm going to shield, and it is the full scent of the overheat. We can now fire off a Moonblast. Moonblast will be coming through, and it's no shielded by the opponent, which is huge for me, because I needed that damage. We've only got resisted charge boost to throw, but Moonblast, definitely going to hit the hardest. They full send the overheat once again, but we can come in with the Amoongus. We've just got to be careful of a catch attempt onto the Drapion, so I'm not going to throw straight away. The opponent goes for the catch. We get the Astonish farm down, and it just depends. Can Amoongus live an earth power from the gastrodon i'm pretty confident that we can amoongus pretty bulky here so of course no shields remaining earth power doesn't get the ko we come out with the grass not loaded and of course this is double super effective grass not gets the ko up against the gastrodon and i'm able to take that game so that's gonna be it for today's video if you did enjoy it please make sure you leave a like leave a comment letting me know and as well don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already and if you want to see more content like this in the future make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications that way you'll be notified whenever i upload a new video and if you want to take your support even further you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos shout outs at the end of each video custom loyalty badges and custom emojis to use in the comments i want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day